It is a 537, and I'll call the uh, public hearing to order for the purpose of hearing comments on the proposed 2014-2015 operating budget. Um, this budget was released to the Board of Trustees and to the public on uh, March 9th. It's been on our village webpage uh, since the beginning. Um, this is the uh, fourth meeting that the Board has had thus far uh, to discuss uh, this uh, proposed budget. The proposed budget that I proposed uh, to the Board included a 6.19 uh, tax increase for the Village Tivoli. Uh, it was not a decision that I came to uh, quickly. Um, it was after a lot of review and a lot of uh, look back at where we were and where we need to be as a village. Um, the board met uh, last week in a workshop uh, and there were amendments made uh, to that proposed budget. Uh, we will vote on this budget uh, next uh, Wednesday, I believe at 6 o'clock uh, here, here at the Village Hall. Um, I said earlier, um, if, you, if you would like to give comment on the proposed budget, please just give your name and your address so that we can include it in the minutes. And please, if you can, keep your comments uh, to three minutes. And please address the board and not each other. It allows us to uh, better uh, take minutes um, uh, for the record. So at that point, I would turn it over uh, to the floor uh, as we welcome our comments on the 2014-2015 uh, proposed operating budget for the Village of Tilly. Cleveland, but I've been asked by Hildegard Edling to read a letter to the board. Sure. Uh, because she's not able to be here today. So it's not mine. <laughs> okay. Uh, to the board, Village Board of Trustees, and Mayor Prana. I have a meeting conflict tonight and have asked that this letter be read for me. I believe it is important for the record to show the value of the Tivoli Free Library to this community. Libraries are more important than books. Nationwide, libraries serve as gathering places for their patrons and communities through programs as broad as reading groups, crafts, games, lectures, movies, exercise, etc. Proof of this activity in our area can be seen in the many listings in local media of all kinds, paper and electronic. That there is a line item in the village budget for the library shows an awareness on your part of its importance to the community. The high level of activity at the library has turned it into the community center, bringing not only village residents to the village hall, but people from throughout our area. The weekly hooks and needles, yarns and threads group, which I assist in coordinating, has participants from the town of Red Hook, the village of Tivoli, and Columbia County. Admittedly, this means a lot of foot traffic for the village hall, and isn't that a wonderful thing for this great historic building? And while this may mean more than upkeep, please remember that the library pays for the cleaning of both rooms on the main floor, as well as both bath restrooms. Thank you for your attention and hope for support. Stop in sometime and see the activities for yourself. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Sincerely, Hildegard Edlin. And I'll get this to you. Actually, you can hand it to Linda. We'll put it in the minutes. Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> Is anyone else willing or wishing to address the board on the proposed budget? Tom Chrissy. Yes, uh, Tom Chrissy. Uh, what is the uh, proposed rate right now? Uh, it was six seven, but what is it down to? I believe, based on the amendments that the uh, that were discussed last week, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that number was two point six nine. Are you, are you just going to try to get it under the two percent? Because if we don't, then if there's any tax relief to homeowners, we lose it. Um, the I sent a memo to the board today. I reviewed the amendments that were made and looked at some of the year-to-date levels. Uh, my concern is that some of the amendments that were made might leave us short in some areas, and I would encourage the board uh, to look at the memo that I sent to them today, and we may have to consider, in my opinion, uh, there may have to, we may have to consider uh, raising some of the, some of the lines there. Uh, the fact that the board has already voted to uh, consider overriding the tax cap prevents uh, village residents from receiving uh, that property uh, uh, tax credit that the governor um, sent down. So then our tax rate actually is going to be a lot more than whatever percentage I can't tell you that we haven't adopted the budget yet I can just tell you that currently as it stands uh, the amended budget uh, that we discussed last week was 2.69 right. um, as I said I just sent this to the board this afternoon uh, the board is going to vote on it last week and I would expect that we'll 
we'll probably make uh, further tweaks and adjustments between now and Wednesday. But you'll still be over the over the two percent. Yes. And if they were going to give us two hundred fifty dollars or five hundred dollars back in a rebate or whatever whatever their plan was, yeah. that would mean that we pay over 50% increase in taxes. We would not be receiving that, uh, I don't know the final number right now, Tom, but we would not be, we as residents, would not be receiving that uh, tax credit that the uh, governor's proposed uh, in, in his budget. Hold on one second. It, it, I don't know, I just don't think that's too fair to a lot of, a lot of the elderly people, <clears throat> a lot of disabilities and stuff like that. You know, I understand because I know that, that it costs money to do things. Uh, but, you know, in years past, um, you guys come up with a budget, and like you say, you know, there's some items that, that need to be addressed. You come up with a budget, and before we even get four months into a budget, we're out of money. I mean, you freeze our budget, we can't buy this, we can't buy what's needed. It's like, where does all the money go when you guys come up with these budgets? I mean, if it's, what is the sense of making a budget if you're not going to have the budget four months down the road. I mean, you know, say 2%, and actually at this point in time, it's actually going to cost the, the taxpayers a lot more than 2%. I mean, figure it. If you lost a rebate, if that's $500 and your food bill is $1,000 a year on your taxes, that's a $500 loss you took. So you, that's a 50% increase in this, in 50.2 whatever you make it, increase in taxes for the, for the villages of this, uh, the residents of this village. Something's not right. Well, Thank you, Tom. Hold on one minute. We're going to take names. Okay. Thank you. Rich, I saw you. Did you want to address the board? Um, yeah, I'm just a little confused. Um, I worked in a, a few weeks after you started, but you know, I, I printed a budget off of the website the other day, but um, you know, I, I heard you just mention that you just sent an amended budget to the board, so. No. Uh, okay. It, it no. was what on the website, what you're talking about here, or there is is a, um, about something that's the, not... the proposed budget that I submitted originally on March 9th included a 6.19 uh, tax increase to the board. The board met last week uh, in a workshop to make amendments. That um, budget, those amendments are reflecting on today's, um, uh, on, the, um, on the budget that was released either yesterday or today in the village. And I believe that tax increase came in at 2.69. Okay, so if I printed it, this out a few days ago, is this what budget? The one that you should, if you want to print a budget off, if you want to print the actual budget, if you go to our village webpage, you would see, I think it's titled Revise mm -hmm. Tentative Budget. Okay, well, I'm not sure. And that's, uh, I, and have, that is, I have one that stated it's a memo for you on March 9th. Right, right. So, so is I, this outdated what I, what I review? What? Well, how could, okay, what was, the, what was on the website, and you're having a public hearing, and there's something else now. I don't understand how I'm supposed to come to a meeting after reviewing this, and I printed out a few days ago, and now you're talking about something else. So the numbers I'm looking at here are not accurate anymore? The numbers, the, the numbers that you have in front of you is the proposed budget that I presented to the Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees has been meeting weekly since I proposed uh, that. I understand that. Since I proposed that budget. What we wanted to do is to amend that proposed budget. We, we amended that proposed budget based on the input that the trustees had and we made amendments. That proposed budget was placed onto the village webpage. That, that amended budget now includes a 2.69% tax When was it put on the webpage? I believe it was yesterday okay, or, so, or the so day. So if I printed this out three, three days ago, so you put something you posted yesterday, that's what you're having a public hearing on today? No, I, no I'm sorry. We are having a public hearing on the proposed budget that I proposed to the board. The budget that you have is exactly what this public hearing is on. Okay, this budget process is an ever moving and ever evolving process. Okay. If you yeah, want you to make, make intelligent comments on something that is a moving target, that's what I'm saying. That's the process, Rich. I have no other way to give you any. The, the mayor well, yeah, is responsible. have the revised copies here for everybody that's... The mayor is responsible. We're there. not going to have any back and forth. Hold on just a second. Okay. No, no, I'm not, no. I, 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 don't like I don't mean you. I don't mean you. Tonight's public comments are on the proposed budget that I propose to the Village Board of Trustees. This proposed budget may change tomorrow, may change Thursday, may change Friday, because the board is continually meeting 
in discussing this uh, proposal. And I would suggest when you come up with a finalized budget that you have another public hearing so that people can know what your final proposal is. We'll take that under advisement. But I would tell you that... That's only fair, especially for those of us who are, are here today. I would I tell you that... Be here. I would tell you that I will definitely welcome public input before we adopt this village budget uh, next Wednesday. And if there's any changes between now and that meeting, it will definitely be posted. Thank you. Exactly. One more question. Go ahead. But some specific comments, and that is, you know, um, you know, it takes a while to try to figure out, you know, these numbers and what you're comparing, where your percentages are. So, you know, I can't say I haven't, and what some of these light items mean, like legislative and, and executive payroll and that kind of thing. But, you know, if I'm interpreting it right and looking at the, your March 9th, you know, from 2012 to 2014 executive payroll. Is that your payroll? The executive payroll is mine, yes. yes. Okay, well you got a 38.5% increase I in did. the last two years. Yeah, well in 2012 really? from actual to the... I'd to like the, to know where the money is. <laughs> just, yeah. you know, the truth be told... It's this a $3,000 increase. It's a 3000 but it's a 38% increase. Well, okay, okay if I, I, that's why I qualified my statement. Sure. If I'm reading this right, because there's the columns aren't really labeled well for, for a lay person to try to interpret you know, where you're comparing right. things to. Uh, Just tell me what the headings mean, because the actual means expenditures to date, but not budgeted. Whereas approved on that is what's budgeted and what, what's expected to be spent through May 31st. Okay, well, I, I'll just have, I have a $7,900 salary for executive payroll in 2012. That's, that's just because we And an $11,000 only... salary of actual, of, uh, in, in... Okay, it's so. because it only includes the first nine months of the year, and he will be paid in March, April, No, May. Not, for, not for 2012, it doesn't. Rich, I'm going to tell you right now, I did not receive a 30% increase in my salary. I received... I'm just going by the numbers. Let me tell you this. I make more than, can I finish? I make more than 50% less than my predecessor made. I think for the last two years that I've been mayor, I have voted to reduce my own salary. And I do not take a, a salary as budget officer. Any other comments? Because I think we've taken up uh, the three minutes. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't know those three minutes. Like I said, I didn't. Go ahead. Um, question for my mother, actually. So. Sure. Uh, who gets a pension? Pension fund right now? And typically? The, um, there are the village employees. There is, uh, I believe, uh, myself is involved uh, in that, and the, I'm sorry, yeah. no, um, and village employees specifically. Like the uh, DPW? Or, mm -hmm. okay. So they, yeah, they, they get they, a pension after they retire? Or? After so many years, okay. depending on what the state uh, regulations are. Is that it? Oh, <laughs> and um, you said there was a health, in, like health, uh, payments, like health insurance increase, like 30%. I was wondering why that was. Just because uh, rates have gone up in right. terms of health cost. Yeah. Um, all of the employees um, pay into their health insurance at least 15% uh, uh, pay 15, into. 15 or 50? 15% into their, uh, into their, uh, into their health insurance. Consider raising that. <laughs> Hold on, I just want to see if Shane's done. Hold on one second. I, I promise. That's it. That's it. Okay, Patricia Drive, thanks for having you. This all may be out of date since the budget appears to be in flux and nobody seems to know what's what. But well, we do know what's what. Yeah, it's well, a working, anyhow, it's a working let, me finish, let me finish before we, I use up my three minutes. Um, okay. Uh, where was in the in the in the in the newspaper in the Times? It says the New York State budget includes what a property tax. This is property tax credit uh, as an incentive for municipalities to share services. Is that, are you sharing services? With We're you? actually leaving right now uh, to go to a shared service. So the answer is you don't at know. At 7.30. Do the you answer is what? You don't know yet. No, I do know. Let me finish the sentence. Okay. We're actually leaving right now uh, at 7.30. There's a meeting in Red Hook. Okay. Uh, to uh, first public meeting on shared services with the town of Red Hook and the village of Red Hook and the village of Tivoli okay. uh, to share and or consolidate our public works crews. We already have been sharing services uh, with, with the town of Red Hook uh, prior to me becoming mayor. Um, so that's already um, been in the works prior to me becoming mayor. It was during uh, Mayor Cordier's uh, tenure when we eliminated his zoning enforcement officer, and uh, we now share uh, services with the town of Red Hook. So we're already uh, sharing services uh, with the town of Red Hook. Okay, I have another question. I'll come to you, I promise. What? No, go ahead. Um, in this local paper, it says, and this again may be, you know, out of the budget, it says, um, 
And I know you have to clean up the street after the street painting festival, $3,300. I'm going to let trustees Roddy address that because the proposed budget that I proposed to the board of trustees did not include any funding for any celebrations uh, held in the village of Tilden. I'll ask trustees Roddy to come on. What when you have an expenditure which is self-financed, like the street painting festival? Okay, how's it self-financed? Did they pay anything? It, no, we we collect donations for it. We don't use any taxpayer money. We have never used taxpayer money okay. for the street painting. Is there festival. a way to turn it into a profit center? Can you? Can it be a flea market? Can it be a vintage clothing? Is there any way to make money instead of spending money? We're not spending any money on street painting. We're not spending street painting. any well, money on street painting. What she was donations. saying is that donations are collected donations. totally outside of the tax. So same so. thing with the garden is completely financed by what you have to, and I'm sorry that it doesn't have clarity in the budget, but we, what you have to notice is that on the let, let her finish line, her, let her finish her comment, please. On the revenue line, that $3,340 that we put on the expenditure line is also on the revenue line, and it's identified as donations to street things. So it's it just... Count. It's, so a, it's, placeholder. it's okay. a placeholder. It's a placeholder. But it still needs to be shown because that those donations are coming to the village of Tivoli and we have the money for a time. And so as long as the number is the same on the revenue and the expense. But no tax dollars are spent on any um, uh, recreation um, celebrations. Everything is done through um, okay, so And that those donations are solicited for the purposes purpose of running the street painting right. festival. And if I were to change it and say that it's also to supplement the village budget, it would be a different process. Okay, this is the caffeine. I take the word for it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Nancy Houck, um, I'd like to ask a corollary to the inquiry on the pensions. Uh, primarily, um, is there available for us to review the pension list and what the criteria are for be, uh, receiving a pension, i.e. years of service, et cetera? And uh, I'm curious, as a second question, as to the health insurance benefits, because a lot of us in our own uh, employment have been discontinued on our employment, and I know that uh, you can, as an employer, make that donation to your employee if you'd like. But I'd like to understand why the village is capping it, uh, I mean, why, why the village of Tivoli is actually contributing a I mean, the, the individuals, are employees are contributing 15%. I mean, that seems to be fairly low in this, this day and age. And uh, the last issue is uh, that on top of this, I'm sure we're all aware that Red Hook is doing a uh, revalve this year, or planning to do a revalve, and all of this seems to be quite punitive in an atmosphere where a lot of people are, are cutting back. And uh, I think it's something that one really has to look at and uh, not to feel that things can be done with an impunity because you work so many hours and this and that. We're all working hours. We're all working hard. And it's 2008 since that time. Everything has just been building, building, building back. And I think we really have to substantiate in a very legitimate way all of these expenses. And uh, Tivoli doesn't have that many services, frankly. True. We have nothing. Yes. And I'd like to know when I, you're. I, 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 I'm not going to do it. We're not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to entertain her. I'm going to ask you to leave. Go ahead. Excuse me. I'd, I'd like to know what whole. services you feel as the mayor of the village. Um, I just, are the services that we as residents actually do receive, you know, for which we pay taxes? You have a village Tivoli fire department uh, that is one of the best recognized uh, fire departments uh, in the Hudson Valley. They were just recognized, I think, uh, two months ago. Uh, you have a superb rescue squad, uh, which again is one of, in my opinion, one of the most well-respected uh, rescue squads here uh, in the Hudson Valley. Um, we have just uh, completely refurbished our park. Uh, that was done uh, last year. Uh, we reinstated our summer rec program that had been cut, I don't know how many years ago, for our children. I'm housing a village library downstairs at no cost uh, to, uh, to, to, to the library. 
Uh, we have street lights that we are constantly uh, replacing. Central Hudson's rates uh, have gone up dramatically, so we're, we're having to pay higher rates uh, for Central Hudson. Uh, we're fixing potholes right now. We just put in brand new uh, sidewalks. I don't know how many feet of sidewalks uh, we, we put in. Um, you have water and sewer that is provided uh, through the village of Tivoli uh, rather than, uh, rather than uh, septic uh, and or wells. And as with regards to the, um, the pension uh, cost uh, or the, um, the pension questions that you have, we can, uh, we can get that information uh, off to you. I, I think it would be helpful to the residents to see just to understand, you know, and, and to make clear exactly what these additional expenditures are for. Now, just getting back to the comment on the, uh, the fire department, it's not, I mean, that's a necessary aspect. We all agree on that. There's no dispute about that. But there are some basic things, you know, we don't have leaf pickup. We don't have, you know, a lot of things that Red Hook has, that, and we, you know, we are actually in a position to subsidize a lot of things being in Tilly and having not the same services that we are actually paying taxes into for a larger umbrella. And I think that uh, these are some of the things that I personally as a resident would like to see as a benefit to, you know, and on the list, you know. And in addition to, I mean, it's nice to get a pension. I'd like to get a pension. And I'd like to be able to put in for a pension. And I'd like to say, yeah, I mean, I'd like to earn more money and I'd like to have a bill to pay for my insurance. But that's not going to happen. And I'd like to know how you justify doing it for yourselves as a, as, as a board. And it's not, again, it's not um, you know, anything that's an attack or... No, I understand. I appreciate I'm that. I'm trying to understand how it becomes equitable for somebody who is just your average citizen here in the village of Tivoli. Thank you. I would just like to add to the list of services, just for everyone's information's sake. One of the biggest costs is the police patrols. That's a huge line in the budget. As you know, we don't have our own police force, and a lot of our tax dollars go to that, just FYI. Hold on, I want to get somebody who hasn't had a chance uh, to speak yet. Are we so only have... doing the, the budget right now? I have a question. We're only on budget. Right shared now. services. No, it's just on budget. There is a shared services meeting at 7.30, but I'm going to keep it just to um, comment on the, on the budget. So there's no ability to comment on that tonight, just out of curiosity? No, that meeting's open tonight. No, I know. I, I can't go. I mean, as a village of Tivoli resident speaking to the board, I, do I have an Let's see how we do on time. Okay. Uh, how's that? Let's yeah, see how we great, do on time, great, but great, I, great. I really just want to keep it on, uh, keep it on the budget. Yeah, yeah. Other comments on the budget? We'll come back to Karen, and then we'll come to Rich. Okay. Um, my comment is about a share service that's in the budget, and that's the zoning board, the CEO. When we had shared our service with Red Hook, we were going to evaluate whether it was a good thing to do, whether it was either going to save us money, hopefully that's why we shared services with him, or if it's actually going to cost us more money. To my knowledge, I don't think anyone on the board has done that yet, have they? Oh, yeah. That's have you more. done that? We, we go biannually, if not more often. And, and semi-annually. Mm -hmm. I can't, I've, I've been looking at that budget line for what we pay to Red Hook for the service of CEO. And I, I've seen 20,000, I've no. seen 13 now, I think, or 12. We, well, we pay to Red Hook for the zoning enforcement officer is $15,000 a year. That's 3,000 up from the 12,000 that we initially started with, but it does not exceed what we paid our independent zoning officer. The other expenses that you see in there, the cost of the village planner or the attorney or code, getting the code put into the online access code books, um, the, the, um, the development of new zoning laws, can you just answer that? Hold on, let's, let's, let's just finish this conversation and then Rich, and then we'll come back to you. Okay. So that, that roughly breaks down into about $300 a week, three times 52, 15,000, maybe a little less, $300 a week. Uh, but, I mean, I look through the minutes of the board and I find primarily the, the, the purpose of the CEO is to give out building permits and to inspect the, the places where he has. And I, I mean, if, if Tilly gives out 
15 building permits a year. That's that's a lot. Actually, it's, we give out more than that. Okay. Because I haven't seen it in the village minutes. We it's, can get that into the minutes. We have we have a, we have activities of the zoning officer. We have permits, and we have uh, um, CBOs. All okay. of those right. could be. If, if you if you convince me that that it's financially a good move for Tivoli to do that, then I would support it. I also think that there's also a need. We we lost something when we lost that service. We lost a visible person in Tivoli to be present yeah. to address the violations that we have here. So we've given up one thing for the other, and that's when you share services. Sometimes you have to forego things. Uh, we tried sharing services with garbage pickup at Red Hook. It didn't work. We, we read through those activities at the village board meeting each month. Right. But I don't see any reason why we couldn't post it, those reports. Mm -hmm. All right, that's, that's my... Thank you, Rich, back to you. Uh, a couple questions, a couple comments. One, in terms of the police, I think I saw a $10,000 increase for additional police force. So my question is, have you approached BARD security about a shared service with them? We all know that a need, part of the need for police in Tivoli is because we have a significant student population. I really, frankly, that feel that BARD should share in that responsibility. It shouldn't just be up to the taxpayers of the village of Tivoli to provide that service. So I would suggest that a serious conversation be held with BARD that they should help with those patrols as a $10,000 contribution to this village because they create the need for that service. Um, Secondly, I, I requested just that information through a FOIL request, and I was denied it, basically, on the building permits. I was told it was in the minutes. I asked for building permit information, a FOIL request. I was told it was in the minutes. It's not. I would like to have that information as well. When it comes to the health care costs, I want to echo that 15%. No, they should be paid 15%. It can't, the taxpayers cannot carry those costs anymore. The same with the pensions. I don't know why you're getting, I don't get a pension anymore. And I, I've taken a 40% pay decrease over the past three or four years, as many people have. Okay, you guys should not only, you guys should be reducing what you're paid. All of you, I don't even think you should be paid, frankly, at all. And you should certainly not be getting, getting pensions. And the other comment I had, when I stopped and, t and patted Tom on the back, that was for a, a pat on the back. I, I, felt, I felt like your smack on the table was, was rude. Was I was patting Tom on the back because I really appreciate the service. They were at my house at midnight last night, pumped in my <clears> basement <throat> when I was afraid of an electrical fire. So I appreciate the Tivoli Fire Department as one of the premier services that we do have. Yes. That's all I was doing. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. I thought we were having a sidebar. I apologize. No, I just got yeah. back. Back to the police and the clarification. I never see any police. I never hear any sirens. Maybe that's how you do it here, no sirens. I never see any flashing lights. I live on Farrow Avenue, which is basically student housing. So if the police are here for the students, where are the police? What are they doing? What 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 do you say to benefit? Who benefits? Well, we have I'm, regular good students. I'm not asking for the police to come, you know, but where are they? We have regular patrols in and out of the village uh, on a routine basis. We contract with the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office. Um, I'm not going to go into what their schedule is. Uh, we also have uh, zone patrols uh, that come through through the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office. On the days that we're not contracting with the Sheriff's Office, uh, there are days where they are simply just patrolling the village of Tivoli and or the town of Red Hook. Uh, the village of Red Hook Police Department is on contract with the town of Red Hook and the village of um, Red Hook Police Department, did I say Tivoli? The village of Red Hook Police Department uh, comes through uh, regularly, as does the New York State Police Department. And, uh, what are you looking for? I'm sorry? They're patrolling. What are they looking for? You have to ask the uh, police officers what they're looking for specifically. Hmm. Any other comments? Go ahead, Tom. One quick thing. What, is, what does it cost for the, for the total patrols that we've been paying? I have no idea. Versus whether or not we go back to having our own police guy here. Is having our own guy cost a lot more money than than oh, yeah. just just the, these patrols? I'm sorry. Just the just the insurance costs alone would be astronomical uh, for that. We, it was it, the village obviously, as you know, for those of you who were born and raised here, at one point had their own uh, police department. The the cost and the insurance and equipment associated with having your own uh, village police force is, is it's high. It's much higher than we allocated 35, 38. 
I think, 35000 30, 30, um, to drop in the bucket as to what it would cost just to, just to ensure a police department. Any other comments on the... So, I got this 4-1 edition. Uh, you got a 2.69 increase. That's about $11,282. So, if we want to get a rebate, if there is such a thing, can we get that down to like 1.99 without too much difficulty? I don't know if you heard me in the beginning. The fact that the board already voted to uh, consider an override prevents residents from obtaining um, the uh, the tax credit that uh, the, the state has proposed. Can you review it? So, we, yeah. if there is such a rebate, we would receive that. With that override letter, what did you get there? I, that I get we passed a resolution that permitted us Sorry, I didn't to that. override the 2% cap. Once that resolution has been passed, and I have to admit I didn't know this, but what Brian is saying is because we passed that resolution, we could actually reduce taxes, and we still wouldn't get the rebate. You can't repeal that uh, resolution that you made? I don't believe so. Who, I'm still on the board here at the table, right? Yeah. Who, uh, what was the vote on that? That was a unanimous vote. Well, right. Everybody on that the board? That was a unanimous vote. We're all responsible right. for that. Okay. <laughs> um, and so not only have, that, if I could just interrupt, we had a public hearing for that particular purpose, and there was no one in attendance at that, so. Not even me. You weren't there. Uh, so $11,000, is that, is that difficult to raise? Because I noticed that we were paying the police a little more, and the fines are dropping. We had $12,000 in fines, now we're showing around seven. I know we're in the third quarter of the year. Do you think they're gonna increase that much? to offset that? A, go ahead. My understanding of fines is that we don't receive very much from fines. Do Depends you, on what the infraction is, what percentage we get, uh, but on the, for the most part we don't get it. We're, we are spending that money for the good of the citizens of Tibble control. to maintain law and order. We're not doing it to generate revenues. Well, the past couple of years, the fines have ranged from sixteen five ninety five to twelve thousand five in twenty thirteen. I don't know what twenty fourteens are. That's still out. You're at forty seven hundred dollars right now. That's that's quite a bit. And we acknowledge that. And the deputy mayor and I had actually spoke about that. And a conversation uh, has taken place uh, with the sheriff's office uh, regarding um, the, the lack of the. Perception of what was lack of, uh, of of tickets. You and I, you and I have discussed this, and um, tickets after we had that conversation uh, have been issued. Again. So if if let's dream if that came up five thousand dollars, that's half of this two point six right there. Now you're down to one point three. You understand that? I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I'm also being realistic and know that. Looking at what our expenses are, and knowing that there are lines right now, all anyone has to do is look at our budget. There are lines right now uh, that are over budget. There are there are expenses that we are seeing every every single day. Um, that to, in my opinion, to have a tax increase of, of less than two percent would do more harm to this village than better. We would not have, we would not be able to run this village based on uh, what you're suggesting. Nancy? Um, I just have a query about what was in the Observer. Um, and, you know, he, a lot of times journalism is a little bit succinct and doesn't really clarify the full extent of what's going on, obviously. But um, it does say here that um, budget items with with Crana and Trustee Susan Ezradi leading the search for more savings and extra revenue. As Roddy wants the board to look at legal expenses, it seems like, quote unquote, any legal, legal advice I need is never covered, she said. I, I guess it's, it's one thing to list all of the expenses in the budget to say, this is our budget. I'd like to know those line items that are in the budget, if you're truly looking for 
some sort of um, expense cutting as opposed to tax increase. What things in, what, which line items in the budget are there that you feel you can look at? I mean, you said fire department, all of this, I, you know, that, that's okay, a necessity, but again, and I hate to like just, just you know, beat, beat the horse, but is it really equitable and fair to have line items that increase personal revenue and require payments from the citizens, for that matter. That did, those particular line items increase the budget quite a bit, and especially if you've got uh, projected pension costs of $46,000, and then you're talking about not being able to afford certain insurance aspects, yet we're paying. For the record, and, with regards, I mentioned myself earlier, and then I'll turn it over to you. Um, I'm no longer in, I mean, I'm 10 years in, so I'm, I'm, I'm done in terms of paying in and, and so on and so forth with regards to, to that portion of it. But when you talk about salaries, um, none of the elected officials are taking um, an increase in, in salary. Um, with regards to cutting, the, the budget that I received, the budget request that I received from the department heads and the trustees, I believe, and our clerk can correct me if I'm wrong, had a 30% tax increase, if I'm, if I'm correct on that. We sat for weeks, the clerk and I and uh, our, our bookkeeper, we whittled it down to 6.19. Then my board, to their credit, sat last week in a meeting, and that was our third meeting, I think, and we whittled it down uh, from 6.19 to 2.69, um, is where it stands right now. There's no other, in my opinion, there's no other spot to cut. We, we've cut everything. We have mandated and contractual expenses that, that we need to pay. Um, I've reduced the fire department. I've reduced the rescue squad. I've reduced my line. I've reduced uh, the clerk's line. We, we cut out funding for uh, trainings. I had put in their trainings uh, for the trustees. They cut that out. DPW was slashed almost <laughs> in half. There's really no other spot to, to cut. And then, as I said earlier when I started, the cuts that were made, I think in some areas, we have to bump them up. Just Central Hudson cost alone. Um, I've, I've gone up, you've been reading the paper, so. Right, and I understand that, and that's, that's certainly a point of view, and I'm just speaking for stepping into to another person's shoes, which is really, I mean, we have the Central Hudson cost going up too. We have all this work penalized. I just know. Much, and so everyone comes, comes to us, I mean, and, and you know, do you have to subsidize? Well, at what, what point does one not recognize that everybody needs subsidy? And we can't all keep just shoveling it out. It's just not possible. That's that, you know, I really think, you know, to make the claim, you know, that, yeah, this is a statement of fact. We've cut as much as we can cut. But really, everybody has cut. Can you really then justify saying to somebody else, well, we need still need you to pay. We can't cut anywhere else. I mean, what, you know, the, the, the ship just starts to get so many holes in it, and it's maybe not your ship, but I know my ship, everybody's plugging my you know, ship with holes and asking me to, to bear, bear the brunt. And it really is punitive because it's a bias and it's um, a presumed subsidy. And I don't think we, we really can afford to do it. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, let me come up uh, to Pete, and then I'll come back to you, Rich, just so Pete gets a chance. Um, in, in, in fairness, I, I agree largely with what you're saying in, in, in principle. I will say, however, that over the past few years, I mean, I've lived in the town for, for a long enough time now to see it sort of go up and down, and I think we are bearing the brunt of, of cuts. I mean, the services in this village have gone down dramatically over the past uh, 10, 15 years, to my eyes, the condition of the village outside has gone down. We used to have a larger DPW crew, I believe. You had one extra person who was a half time. Which is, I mean, still, we had more. And, I mean, I personally don't mind paying taxes. I don't mind paying extra taxes. What I mind is having obvious inefficiency and, and obvious waste. If we're actually getting something for our services, such as when we had our own CEO here in town, we were getting a lot more for our money than we get now. 
a lot more, right? Which is my argument against some shared services. Obviously, some shared services, such as you know, contracting out to the to the to the Dutchess County Sheriff, that makes a certain amount of sense, right? I mean, the the insurance costs and liability of having uh, village employees with guns running around in cars, I mean, that goes up quite a bit. So that makes a certain amount of, sh uh, of sense to share that cost. But other things, not so much. Uh, Karen brought up the example of the, of the garbage collection. I guarantee you, if we started sharing services of the DPW with Red Hook, I mean, the, I, see, I hear our guys, I live right down near the sewage treatment plant, right? Every time those guys go out at midnight, one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, I hear them. Our kids hear them. Our services keep getting cut back due to budget cuts. It makes a certain amount of sense. But if we, there's a certain point to which you can't cut anymore. You cut to the bone, and then you just don't get the services. Our infrastructure, due to deferred maintenance over decades, not just you, not just Tom, not just Mark, there's been deferred maintenance over decades on our water and sewer services. We keep getting water main breaks. We get them at one o'clock in the morning. Do you think Red Hook really, honestly, is going to be as responsive to that as the guys that are here in the village? It, it, this is. So I mean, this highway, is, this, is part it, this this would be highway. Our okay, so you're not talking be, about the, the whole thing as a shared service. Yeah, it, it's, it's simply for highway. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, in any case, my comment stands about, about shared services and about the fact that I think, you know, 6% budget increase would not, you know, I don't make a lot of money, but that's not going to put me in the poorhouse. I don't see that as being penalized if we're actually getting something in return for it. I find that there's now a culture of cut, 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 cut. And we reap what we sow. We don't get that much. We don't have that many services. We don't, we don't have as much as we used to. And that's the, that's the inevitable effect of, of cutting. So I think, I think to have cutting everything as your dogma is always, not always, but is often going to lead to uh, paying a different kind of price rather than just a financial one. May I just let, say that? let me, Rich, and then I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll go All right, thank you. All right, just, just one comment. I think we're on the same page with this. It's really just an issue of what is practical. Where do you cut? What is meaningful to cut? What is meaningful to increase? Where, where that, that's the whole issue of balance. And I think that's why we're all here today to understand why some items in the budget are more value, valuable to you than to the average citizen here who may feel you may be cutting, but maybe you're cutting the wrong things. That's that, you know, that is, it's that simple. Rich? Um, I think there needs to be more an increase in shared services as opposed to some of the comments, uh, frankly, um, including DPW things. I think there's a larger issue you have hearing those guys go at 1 o'clock in the morning because we have such failing systems. I mean, they should have to go at 1 o'clock in the morning because then we're paying them overtime and we pay lots of overtime for the DPW. But the problem so, is that was 30, uh, 40 years ago as the, the problem started. We're okay. paying the price now for, right. for an old problem. Well, um, yeah, but there needs to be some capital planning to be able to fix that, so we're not going out every night trying to fix water main breaks. But um, so I still think there needs to be more shared services with Red Hook to reduce the overall tax burden to everybody in the town. Um, but I think you've heard some suggestions. If you can't cut more, I think you've heard some suggestions about you know um, cutting pension, about uh, employees paying more for their health care services. And Mike, one of my questions is, when was the last time you went out and and Tried to bid for for new health care because you know if if it's a policy that's been sitting around for a number of years, they just keep raising the rates, and you got to go out every couple of years and look for a new health insurance policy to get a better price. So when was the last time that was We've done? We've been doing that annually. Annually, okay. But I still think that um, you know that the employees, you know, it's not a cut necessarily, but you know um, they need to bear more of the cost, um, not us. Thank you, Rich. Any other comments on the budget, Kendall? Um, I just want to revisit the uh, code enforcement officer and um, you know building inspector. Mm -hmm. um, how much did we pay when we had our own, and what are we paying now? A lot more. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Exactly the same. Yep. So, but he's saying a so lot more. So we paid fifteen thousand. Well, we had some person. No, I'm sorry. When we had our own person here, not 
I'm not talking about Red Hook. When we had our own person here who was doing it and was available a couple nights a week or on Saturday mornings or whatever, what was the salary of that person? Was it fifteen thousand? Okay. It was fifteen thousand. And how many hours were we doing? Do you know? He he had I think office hours. Yeah, office hours. It was effectively here, somewhere between six and eight hours. But we, remember, he worked full time, so he couldn't be here. Couldn't be available from nine to five, which the Red Hook people are available to Dibbleites. We do have to drive that five miles. And yeah, they're not always available. That's yeah, right. <laughs> that much. But um, that, now, <clears throat> in terms of your salaries and your number of hours, how uh, how many hours are you expected to work? <laughs> How many hours am I expected I mean, to work? There, isn't there some yeah. kind of <clears throat> document that outlines your job description and the number of hours? There's <coughs> technically not a job description, believe it or not, for the mayor and or the trustees, mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not. I'm still looking for one. <laughs> but, it, go ahead. Right. Um, but um, all of the, um, the, 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 the state is very... Um, close or in, in, in contact with regards to all the municipalities and demonstrating how many hours a week uh, elected officials are, are, are spending uh, in their office and on their jobs. Um, it's, as you know, when you're mayor of a village or a trustee of a village, it's on a Monday through Friday, nine to five sort of job. So, I mean, there's times on the weekends where I'm calling the trustees or I'm emailing the trustees about something or after hours or meeting in the morning. It's not a, uh, it's, you know, it's not a nine to five job. And let me tell you, the, the, this board is not a volunteer board. This is a hands-on board. Um, no one is just phoning it in. And for the $2,500, $2,500 they make, um, nobody's getting rich off of this. <laughs> off no, of this I, know, I know they're not. I'm just yeah. curious. I'm curious also about the health insurance. Um, generally, what ha um, you have a full-time job, right? Yes. And I'm not sure about the rest of you, but... Um, or what your marital status is or whatever, but um, usually um, if you have access to health insurance through your other job, and this is only a volunteer job, wouldn't you take it through that? Or through your spouse or if you have the other I don't take health then? insurance through the village. Do you, you don't, do yeah. No, no, the entire board does not take no. So what is the health insurance? Who takes the health the village, insurance? Village employees. <laughs> Five of the None, Five employees? Yes. None of the gold uh, elected. Actually, only four of them. Mm -hmm. Including, I don't believe Judge Clark does either. Deputy does but I don't believe uh, he does. No one takes uh, help. Does the deputy clerk does that? She, she, so she has opts. it for okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I just wanted to clarify that because I wasn't sure. Yeah. You know, no, I'm not oh, you were there are such it. things as unfunded mandates <laughs> to villages that are imposed by the state. And I know that regardless of whether people have them, I think we are required to offer both health care and pension right. to any elected officer and any employee. Right. Um, you're fortunate right. that yeah. not everybody takes it. Right. But I that, believe that's what that I was is and, a state mandate. And that's mandate. a state mandate that we can't do anything about in the budget anyway because there's right. really no, in terms of, does that mean that in terms of the 15% contribution, I mean, a lot of this confusion could be... Could be you're, you're aware that our DPW is unionized, are you not? Yeah, well, that's, but that's what yeah. I'm saying. So, I mean, if we're talking about, you know, cutting <laughs> the amount that we subsidize the, uh, the pension, if that's a state mandate, we can't do anything about that anyway. So I mean, why, even, why even have the conversation here? Yeah. Nancy asked a question, and I'm going to give you a little rubric that won't help always, but it sort of does. In the budget, if it ends with a point one, it's a salary. If it ends with a point two, it's a capital and equipment expenditure. If it ends with a point four, it's a contractual expense. Point six and seven are debt servicing. Point eight is benefits. In terms of discretion by the um, board, pretty much the only thing we have discretion over is the point for us. 
Yeah. And maybe contractual expenses. Maybe what we can do next time, because <laughs> everything every time we do something like this and learning experience, is maybe put a little blurb like that on the web page so people can uh, better follow. I, I think that would be helpful. Thanks, mm -hmm. Nancy. Did I see your hand up? And then Rich. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, first of all, I maybe go against the trend a little bit to thank the five of you <laughs> for all the work that you've been doing to work on this budget. And uh, knowing most of you and over the years I've been in the village and seen how much time you spend in your positions, I know it goes way beyond what would be a reasonable hourly wage <laughs> against what your compensation is. So it's, it's very appreciated. Um, and I have two questions, one that relates to uh, something that actually Nancy, you brought up about in the Observer, I think it was, about the legal expense, if there was any room in the budget to cut that back. And number two, how, uh, based on my review of the budget, how are we really preparing and what else can we do for the inevitable outlay that's going to have to happen for infrastructure, particularly the water system? I don't want to speak for Trustee Israeli, and I'll let her jump in. I think that sentence was taken out of context because I think what we were talking about, Trustee Israeli, correct me if I'm wrong, was, was a retainer uh, discussion that, that we had. And you know, some items are covered under the retainer agreement, and some are not covered under the retainer agreement. So I think part of that conversation had to do with okay, what's going to be covered under the retainer and what's not going to be covered under the retainer. Um, I give the State of the Village uh, on April 24th and the reorganization meeting that night. We'll appoint <coughs> a village attorney uh, that night. And prior to that conversation, we'll have a, prior to that appointment, um, we'll have a conversation with the attorney to make sure we know what is and what's not going to be covered under the retainer agreement. So I think, and I don't need to speak yeah, for you, but yeah, I think that's where that conversation yeah. came from. Um, the other question you, you, you mentioned, I think, is about the water uh, infrastructure. Um, we are currently... Um, in discussions with the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority, as well as a possible private vendor uh, to come in to look at our uh, water system. Uh, there's no doubt about it. This water system here is, is aging every single day. And when you have one water main break, what's it do? It puts pressure on another pipe and you have another water main break. And we had, what, three or four of in the mirror in, four, in, in a small amount of time. Um, we're, lo we're losing track. It's yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. So we know that this water infrastructure is, is, is aging. Um, and we can't keep filling, we can't keep doing it, just filling the holes like that. It's putting pressure on the system itself. It's putting pressure on DPW. And it's putting pressure on our fiscal situation as well. So I think for a village this size um, and for the infrastructure that we have, I think as mayor, and the board may disagree or agree with me, but I think it's time for a third party uh, to come in and start looking at it, whether it be the Water Wastewater Authority or a private firm to come in and start to start looking at it. It would take the burden, the financial burden, off of the village of Tivoli if we did have a third party uh, to come in and to come in and look at it. How, how would it do that to have I a private? I don't think it would, Brennan. I think you would have a separate administrator who would be setting water and sewer. Right, well, I didn't finish. To, to, to cover that. Mm -hmm. So uh, privatizing the, the water and sewer, basically, yeah. is what you're talking about? The way water and sewer is supported right now is by the water and sewer right. bill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And the board, this board, has spent some time. When we came in, we, you all will remember, we raised those those rates about 25 percent. They should have been raised a lot, a, lot of a, a lot of you. But the fact was, um, we didn't have long-term financing for the Woodmark Well. Um, we, we had done no capital planning at all, um, and we needed to build in a surplus. We've actually, in this year, and these are not the subject of this hearing, the water and sewer funds, because they're separately financed, they have nothing to do with your property tax and the basic budget that you have here. You will see both all three sets of budgets in this package, but the only one that's really relevant for the purposes of this hearing is the um, uh, general fund. The water fund 
The sewer fund right now has no outstanding debt for the first time since I've been here. We've paid for the reed beds, we've paid for the, the bearings that went out when we had the ice storm about four or five years ago. Um, so, and it is beginning to build a surplus if we're careful about the way we allocate expenses to it. We'll have a surplus which will enable the capital planning that we're talking about. The water fund, we just paid off the repairs to the water tower. Um, this spring, that, that, that bond came off. That left us twenty to $25,000 of surplus of capital money um, in the water fund. And in November, we will have paid off the Woodmark well, which was a principal payment of about 42000 plus interest. So that gives us Seventy, possibly eighty thousand in that budget without changing your rates to begin to do some serious capital planning. If we do it right, for example, if we put metering in um, on the wells on our well fields that can be read remotely, we can reduce some overtime expenses for for the DPW workers. So we are thinking about ways to do things smart. Um, one of the disadvantages that a village like Tivoli has is that we don't have a very high credit rating. Yeah. Um, we're too little uh, to have a really decent credit rating. We, our treasurer has worked very hard to get us good, well-priced loans. Um, but there may be an advantage to having a water administrator do some of that, but personally, I want to do some really competitive looks on, on who we bring in to help with that process. Um, yeah, I mean, it, that just doesn't sit right it, with me and, at and all, and it, and personally. Which, yeah, and I do hope also that we retain control, that we're not just turning it over to an authority um, who runs the I would like to add there, just as a as an aside, we are pursuing more than one avenue of Yeah, absolutely. Solution. Yeah, no, I think it's I just part of the plan. privatizing yeah. and looking at that, yeah. but the Water and Wastewater Authority is a not-for-profit. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of different components that go into this. Absolutely. So it's not oh, just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. I, and yeah. I do appreciate all that work as well. I mean, what Jeff was saying, I think, should be taken hard. We actually do appreciate Thank you. <laughs> all the work and the fact that, honestly, most of the time, none of us are here. Hmm. Um, and you guys sort of do it in silence, which is uh, a disservice, I would say, that we do to you guys. We're going to put cardboard cutouts. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you wanted to finish? And then Rich, and then Karen. Just as a follow-up, then, uh, uh, and as Susan, you would define then as an irrelevant for this meeting comment, um, would be um, while interest rates are relatively low in the market, this do. seems like a good time to be actively pursuing the possibility of doing some financing. We, we have filed with the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture's Clean Water Entity, which is called the Environmental Facilities Corp, an IUP, you're going to get alphabet soup here, which is an intended use plan to, and the way it has been scaled, it anticipates $5 million going into the water system alone. Um, it, you, you have to ask for a lot because you have to get points with this agency before they even consider you for interest-free loans. Um, so it has to be a, a project of size. Um, that includes installing re meters that can be re read remotely, which lowers labor costs. It includes replacing all of our water mains that have not been replaced in the last 10 years. Um, and it includes another well. 
And it would reduce and waste. And we have been thinking about where to put that well. Um, it, um, how many other things that are there? I mean, it's, it includes the repainting and refurbishing of the water tower, which is overdue by about 40 years. Thank you. I want to go uh, to Rich and then Karen, and then we'll come to Pam. Another and then I'll come back to you. Healthcare question. I don't want kind to of be an expert in healthcare, but I think in general, the larger your group, the better rate you're going to get. So if you only have five people, I'm wondering if there, uh, that is something that the two villages and the town could do together. You have a bigger group. You can, I presume you'd be able to get a better rate. Of, you know. Um, can you do that? Are you allowed to do that? There's been, I'm sorry, there's, there's, there's actually been discussion with uh, the Dutchess County, with Dutchess County government and the Mayor's Super Association at, at looking at that. So definitely it's something we're definitely looking at and considering, because you're exactly right. Uh, Karen? I, I've got three things. One, with, with the problem that we have with the infrastructure, which we know has been coming, coming on strong, are there any grant monies out there uh, that are, are, is someone actively looking to see if there's anything that you are? Okay. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately on the water system, uh, it's considered maintenance rather than expansion. Grants are plentiful where you're creating new infrastructure. Okay. They're very scarce when you're maintaining existing. So the fact that Tivoli is sort of unique, even in Dutchess County, and that it has its own water system, is a handicap when you go look at the grants. But we, you should also know that this board applied uh, to replace them, the main line from uh, 9G going going west, and we were denied. That was a Dutchess County Community, community Development Block Grant we applied for. Uh, CDBG, we were denied for that. Uh, we were also recently denied for another application through Dutchess County. Um, we applied. Uh, to have um, new meters and new meter readers up and in. We applied for that, we thought it would have been great. Uh, we put that in based on the advice uh, that we um, had received since it's a planning grant, <laughs> a development grant. Uh, we, we applied for that, but uh, unfortunately we did not receive uh, the, last, the last two. Before Rich Shapa walks out, I want to say, um, when I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong, and I apologize. I thought there was a sidebar going on. My apologies about no that. No problem. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We had another question. Go ahead, two more. Um, apples to apples. I have to keep coming back to the ZEO because that's probably the thing that I see the most in Tivoli. 15,000 Red Hook, 15,000 Tivoli. 15,000 Tivoli is well spent because our ZEO officer that we have here was very present. He, even though he was sat here on one night and on Saturdays, is, his presence was probably the most important thing in this village. People did not have problems finding him. He was out and about. He was proactive, not reactive. When he saw something that needed to be fixed, he had it done. I mean, I still think that having lost that service, Tilly's lost a large part of their pride in this village. I, I agree. I have to second that because working on a lot of projects and everything, I, Oh, I always felt I had access there. I was going to get a direct, straight answer. I mean, I like the guys in Red Hook, but I can't find them half the time. I don't get a call back half the time. When I go down and have meetings, I don't get any answers to questions that I have that should be readily available because they don't have their finger on the pulse of Tivoli. And I agree with you. I think it's something that if we're going to spend that amount of money, I'd rather see it spent on one person here who's and working no, on our yes. behalf. You know? And there's no safe money. I think the board is in agreement that, and I want to thank the Deputy Mayor and Trustees Roddy, we're well aware and share the concerns and frustrations that residents have had with regards to the zoning enforcement officer and the services that we've received. These two individuals um, have recently been meeting with uh, the town supervisor and the ZEOs, uh, Steve Fennell, or Steve Colin Bob Fennell, to discuss the service. And um, my hope is that we'll see uh, immediate uh, improvements very soon. If not, that I think this board uh, needs to uh, carefully look at look at the contract. I want to go to Nancy. Wait, I have one more thing. Go ahead. I, am, I This is good. I have attended board meetings probably over the past 40 years, and many all these budget meetings. And the focus of typically has always been to toe the line on a budget. I've never been to one where anybody said we're going to spend 10% more of what we have. So that's 
maybe that's the downfall of some of the things that we see here today, is because we have told the line every year. Um, and if we didn't have the grants that we've had over the years, we probably would have lost a lot, or taxes would have been huge. So I commend you people for trying to toe the line the Thanks, best you Karen. can. But I, I still think that there are things that really need to be addressed in this village. Thank you, Karen. And they're not out of sight. Yes. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to sort of uh, get your input um, to, to make us all aware of the relationship that we have as Tivoli, you know, uh, I guess a sub-umbrella of Red Hook. That, uh, again, in the Observer, that uh, it was listed here that Red Hook Village was one of 15 cities in the state of New York listed for fiscal stress. Mm. So how, how, does, how, do, how do we as a village then coordinate ourselves with that type of information? I mean, knowing that they are, you know, on a shortfall of money to begin with, and... I think it's yeah. unfair to... I need to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, no, that's okay. I mean, it just says... It. I mean, I, I don't know what the short... what they mean by one of 15, <coughs> except mm. it's only one of... I mean, there are a lot of cities in the state of New York. So the I'd like to understand, since we really do depend on them for a lot of services. It's the village of Red Hook. The right. village of Red Hook. Not the town. Not the town. Our relationship is to the town. Oh, yeah. okay. I, oh, thank you very much. And for the record, uh, okay. the village of Tivoli was not named as one of those municipalities. Ah, okay. <laughs> Just to make everybody feel good. I'm and mostly I, just surprised that it's a city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, I don't want to um, get into a, a village uh, to, to village issue, but... Um, I, I think if you read Mayor Blundell's comments on Red Hook Observer, he was not surprised uh, by that. They have a very large police department, and they had some very large expenses. It does not mean that the village of Red Hook was doing anything inappropriate with regards to their funding. I think if you read the Comptroller's report, it had to do with the amount of debt that they had outstanding and some of the costs that they would had. So it didn't mean that there was money being moved around or that you know, money was just being spent you know, uh, appropriately. What, the, what, what I understood from the article was that, that clearly there was a less revenue that was left over at the end of the budget season and that they there was perhaps not inappropriate, it was just much more of a lack of, of balanced fiscal <coughs> review. Yeah, I can't speak, I didn't read the entire report and I can't speak for the mayor, but... Well, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, it's not the town. <laughs> okay, very yeah. good. Just a quick, uh, just a quick question, just... just almost a hypothetical one, but does the village of Red Hook still have its own separate zoning enforcement officer from the town? Because it was Sam Harkins for years, I right? That's that still, they do, yeah. just I mean, yeah. okay. it seems to me for us to lose ours, but for them in the same couple square miles to have separate, I mean, it seems if anybody should have shared services, it's them, not you know, us necessarily. I don't know the answer. I can find out for me. I'll see I, I'm just curious. curious. I'll, I'll find out. I've seen the mayor tonight. It seems a little funny. Other comments on the actual so. budget, David? Uh, two, three, four things, whatever. Um, okay. <laughs> public safety payroll. What is that? Public safety. It's, I don't it's know, it's 30, a point four, isn't it? One. $4,900. What is that? I, I think it's... It's just a portion of a DPW guy's salary. Who gets paid for that? You said point ones or salaries? Who pulls it or that? It, it would, it's a portion of one of the two It's, it's part of the requirement for the state for the workers' comp to, to portion out salaries. That yeah. We don't have yeah. a consular or anybody walking yeah. around. That's not yeah. what that is. So, for it's example, if it, what, it's the person who, when they open up a water main, puts out the cones okay. to okay. make okay. sure that you're not... Cool. Going into so the point. same, the cone man is the same guy every time, or is it shared around the world? <laughs> <laughs> Could be anyone. Could be anyone. Right. We'll let that go. It's out of the um, salary pool. Street lighting, you got proposed $31,500. Uh -oh. Last year it was around twenty. <laughs> yeah. That's a big, Central Hudson, I know, raise it, raise it. And I just sent a memo to the board outlining where we are thus far and where where I think will be at the end of the year. I think that number, in my opinion, uh, based on year-to-date levels and based on Central Hudson uh, rates, uh, would would need to be uh, would need to be bumped up. So this is three quarters of the. It's one of those things. These figures are all going to change 
after the budget is adopted. Is that correct? Well, the thing about a budget is that it's a never-moving budget, and it's a never-moving document. And we as a village, the, the Village Board of Trustees can make budget amendments uh, when necessary. If you need to move along, you know, I work for Dutchess County Government. You know, we, in our budget line, we have to request, we need more money in this line because we didn't anticipate this. So this budget, when we adopt it on uh, April 9th, um, it becomes effective June 1st. This is the budget that we're going to work with, but we may, from time to time, have to make uh, budget amendments based on uncertain things that, that, you know, that, that we don't plan on. The one thing you can't change is the property tax. I understand. That's okay, come in higher the time the, the, the tax rate? Yes. As it stands right now, um, we need to actually adopt, if I um, just remind me, please, <laughs> we actually need to adopt uh, the tentative budget tonight. Um, and then the next, that's state law, we have to do that. And then the next step is we actually have to adopt the final budget. Will that be uh, this, next what Wednesday. I'm reading right here? What, you uh, what you're reading now, if you printed that off today or yesterday, oh, wow. David, uh, that is the tentative budget that includes a 2.69% tax increase. However, the board can now um, modify and amend the budget up until the up until we adopt it next month. Oh, a couple more things. Go ahead. The um, police department. Yeah. The Dutchess County Sheriff. So we contract them. We do. Is there a new contract in order, or has it not been done yet? Uh, no. The sheriff's. Uh, we haven't done the uh, the contract the yet. Town of Red Hook uses Red Hook Police. Yes, they if do. If they're good enough for them, why aren't we to get them here? This has been a conversation uh, that we've had since we changed. Um, and I don't want to get into specifics of agency to agency. Um, but uh, the, as it stands right now, this village will continue to contract with the sheriff's office. But I don't want to get off topic and get into agency, agency, well, agency. I wondered if Red Hook was uh, maybe a little cheaper. I'm very, they're not. No, they're not. They're, they're not. not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, efficiency, maybe. I don't know. Uh, anyway. Overall, if we've cut everything and chopped everything, is there any possibility that you could actually raise water rates a buck or two or something to offset some of that $11,000? Are you going to be garbage tags? To raise garbage tags? Garbage I think we, we just raised garbage tags last year. Part of the problem with raising garbage tags is that it turns out to be, in economic terms, a very uh, elastic demand. So if you raise the price, which we did last time a dollar, we ended up getting lower revenues. Yeah. And that's because, because fewer people Hold on, let bought <laughs> tags. We sold fewer tags. And that puts a real hardship on people who have dumpsters too, by the way. Keep if you raise those. What does the dumpster, dumpster cost? Uh, one of those Things the system will Broadway here half the time from waste management or whatever. What's that, $25 a month? I, it's not I don't rational. Pay $25 dollars a year hardly for my uh, garbage. <laughs> Dave, I don't think it's rational either. I think we've got the best deal in town. All right, I know it's a good deal. I'm just telling you, you about raise the money, was that, uh, <laughs> I don't think it would. No? I'm not hitting all the people. Go ahead. Um, and, and I'm not see? sure if this is something that uh, uh, Joel is. Uh, Trustee Griffin has already looked into um, the possibility of using some type of solar uh, photovoltaic system for offsetting some of the electric bill, uh, particularly as it relates to the street lights, and possibly even reducing the amount of street light. Do you want to talk about the garage? And it's not a done deal, well, I think, in terms of what we, we do. We do solar. have a photovoltaic system. <coughs> photovoltaic system that sits on the DPW garage roof uh, that was installed five years ago. Mm, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Four or five years Four ago. Four or five years ago. So we've made an effort to that. Um, our problem <clears throat> was actually fantasizing about this in the wee hours of the morning. So, uh, I mean, we could set up an array on one of our, uh, where, where we have one of our well heads, you know. <laughs> marching men, uh, uh, and I have no idea whether you can change where a central headset puts that lights. Uh, but given that they don't even care about putting them right down the middle of Montgomery Street, <laughs> I think that's a tough one. Well, there are, I mean, there are 
programs around the, the state, as a matter of fact, even the state legislators are working on a program right now which would provide, uh, you know, expanding photovoltaic systems and, uh, you know, or, and working with, with municipalities on that. So there are other locations that would be possible. What, what we found when we did the DPW garage was that you would have to do ground mounted ones, which has an aesthetic implication, particularly in a landmark district, because none of the rest of the municipal buildings have south facing roofs, which is one of the critical issues. Yeah. Do you have a process when you hire outside consultants of interviewing other people, or do we just keep having the same one, for instance, the attorney or the engineers or whatever? What's the process? Can we cut uh, the, anything there? I'm sorry? Could we cut anything in, that, in those areas? I think we've already cut <laughs> the attorney line. I think it was already, was, it was already cut from what uh, we originally, originally put in. Um, I had a conversation... Uh, this morning with regards to the engineer uh, billing and um, we've had other engineering firms that have come in as well uh, and I want to continue doing that with other uh, programs as well um, but uh, with regards to billing and this is what trustees Rod was talking about a couple of weeks ago in a workshop you know what are we being billed for what's on retainer and I want to do that with an engineering firm do that with the attorneys and do that with the planners and I think that that would help us uh, dramatically so what you know upfront cost and you know what we actually get to. I just want to clarify about the building inspectors, too. I'm not dissing the guys in the hook. I like them. I've worked with them. But I just feel like having someone who has Tivoli's back would be really good for us. Thank you, Pam. Yeah. I'm sorry. You didn't hear the last part? But having someone who has Tivoli's interest oh, oh. at heart would be, I think, very important. Any other comments uh, regarding uh, the proposed budget? If there are... Go ahead. Do you, do you have a, how proactive a grant writing um, situation do we have here? Because that's something that you might want to consider. It w it's not a budgetary item, but. We have over the last uh, couple of years, well, I can tell you, uh, Trustee Azradi um, received, uh, the board approved it. Trustee Azradi received a planning uh, grant. Um, we are looking probably to apply for another planning grant. Um, uh, trustee, uh, trustees Bruno and uh, Schneider are working on a grant that we received through Greenway, which is a $15,000 grant to give us access uh, down Broadway. Um, trustee Griffith, uh, Deputy Mayor Griffith, applied for a grant to get the compost bins. Uh, we got the sidewalks done. The park was done for the grants. No, I think it's you've been doing great work. I'm, I applaud you for yeah. that. I just wondered, you know, I just wondered if it was an ongoing oh, process. We were seeking yeah. grants out. Right. Okay, one, of, one of the cost cutting that we did a few years ago was right. we eliminated the grant writer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, a few years ago, we lost the, the revenue from, uh, from Town of Hook, I think it was, for use of the rec park. Are we going to get that back now that our facilities have I have so asked, and I'm glad you brought that up. Because um, <laughs> that would be great to have that bump back yeah, I mean, um, if people are using it. The town... Um, the town used to believe <laughs> that that money was specifically earmarked for the park. In reality, what happens is they, the, the only towns can receive that funding, Peter, and they received, I think, eight, I forget what the amount was, but they were giving us eight or nine thousand dollars that we used uh, for trails, we used for Monument Hill, we used for the park, different programs. Um, the town uh, eliminated that funding erroneously uh, a few years ago. And um, when I realized, or intentionally, uh, the town, <laughs> uh, the town eliminated that funding from the village of Tivoli. We, we no longer receive that funding. When I realized and understood the program more, when I came on as mayor, uh, we actually sent a, a letter to the town asking to have that money back. And the town has now informed, uh, I think it was Trustee Roddy last year, uh, that they no longer receive that funding any longer. So that eight or nine thousand dollars. Yeah, that eight or nine is it something we used to get? We, they no longer get it, so we're no longer. Is that anything it. that we could get from the county? I mean, I, I since think we. It's a program that no longer exists. Right. right. And yeah. it's, it got cut. Yeah, and it had to, it, it can only go. <laughs> it can only go to towns, yeah. Peter. It couldn't go to villages or cities. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but what we did do is we put money uh, in the budget uh, for the last three years for our own summer rec program. And then last year, 
because Trustee Bruno uh, worked on it, we, we now made it a summer camp. Great. And um, now that you have the new uh, pavilion and the bathrooms and new equipment is going in, uh, the kids will ha actually have an actual camp as opposed to a summer, uh, um, just a summer rec drop-in program. But, you know, we've, you know, we, the Deppin Mayor was very involved with regards to the grant program that we got new sidewalks. Now we got, we got a new park. You know, we're doing a sidewalk down to the river. Um, and Trustees Riders will work on a planning uh, grant, so, through Greenwood. Any other comments on the proposal? Thing. One more thing, go ahead. The uh, library. There's $5,000 there. What is that? I thought it would be beneficial to show the residents how much we're actually spending to house the library, uh, to try to be as transparent as we, as we possibly could. The village uh, of Tivoli Free Library pays no rent uh, to be here. Uh, they have the, the library room that they have, they have the bays, and they have access to the third floor. So there's no, they're getting that for free. And I think I just saw a board member from the library walk in right now. I won't put you on the spot. Um, but this is a conversation that I've had with both the library chair and the director. I just wanted residents to be able to see how much we're, how much we're spending to house the library. Um, Are they going to so, be charged? Uh, we are in uh, discussions right now to uh, finalize our lease uh, agreement, and um, I don't want to get into the specifics of the lease agreement, but I will tell you in the last conversation that I had with the board chair and the director of the library, uh, the library is very interested in making uh, payments uh, to, to the village of Tilly, but I don't want to get into specifics. So. So but they, but, well, but I don't know how you determine it, because there's probably one water meter around this building and probably one electrical and I don't know how no, 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 no. It, wouldn't, it would be a, a strict rental of this space. They would pay a, a lease fee or whatever it is. Yeah. The library has uh, services that people actually Use. do in there that yeah. raise money. Does that for them personally or does that go to the library? We, it goes completely to the library. We don't receive any funding at all from the library. Karen wrote a letter, read a letter before from Hildegard. The library does pay uh, to clean the library and to clean the public bathroom, um, but they don't uh, contribute anything fiscally uh, right now to the village. And to the library's credit, uh, we're having a conversation right now with regards to our lease. And I don't want to get into lease conversations in a public meeting.